This is one of my favorite videos to do each offseason. We are going to be coming up with 10 NBA trades that need to happen over these next couple of months. So what is going on everybody? How is everybody doing today? I came up with 10 trades that I believe need to happen for these NBA teams this offseason. Some of them are blockbusters, some of them involve just draft picks, and some of them are pretty intermediate trades that you're like, all right, that should definitely happen to improve both these squads. So if you guys enjoyed these 10 trade videos and just me coming up with 10 trade ideas, drop a thumbs up on this video. I've already done this with Damian Lillard, Kemba Walker, Chris Porzingis, and Ben Simmons, and I definitely want to do these with a couple more players and teams in the future. And if this video gets 1500 likes i will do one trade that each nba team needs to do this offseason so yeah that'll be 30 trades we'd come up with so i hope you guys enjoyed the video and let's see what i come up with so the first trade is actually going to be one of my favorite trades i have in this list and it is the new orleans pelicans shipping off eric bledsoe jackson hayes the lakers first round pick that they own next year in 2022 and a 2023 water protected first round pick of their own to the indiana pacers in exchange for miles turner now i love this for the pelicans because i think miles turner would be an exceptional fit next to zion williamson a center that can rim protect as well as space the floor we don't really know what they're going to be doing with alonzo ball but just honestly unloading eric bledsoe who's technically an expired deal Jackson Hayes and even if it's two first round picks I think it is definitely well worth it for Miles Turner to help progress Zion Williamson and to hopefully get back into the playoff hunt next year because for the last two years the New Orleans Pelicans have been underwhelming we all thought they were going to make the playoffs honestly the last two years or at least be in the play-in tournament yes they were in the play-in tournament back in the bubble but it really was because the NBA kind of wanted to see Zion in the playoffs and for the Indiana Pacers this could make sense because Miles Turner will be a free agent sooner than later Eric Bledsoe a veteran player that could still help them go into the the playoffs next season in 2022 and it's just a one-year deal because the second year of his contract at this moment is non-guaranteed or I should say partially guaranteed they get Jackson Hayes who they might like as a roll and cut center put next to DeMontis Sabonis there in the front court and maybe they were high on him coming out of Texas in the 2019 draft but instead they ended up with Goga Batatze because Hayes already went they get a first round pick from the Lakers next year and they get a first round pick from the Pelicans in 2023 maybe if you want to put this as a non-lottery protected first and just straight unprotected in 2023 I think that would make a lot of sense I just really want to see Miles Turner in New Orleans and then maybe the Pelicans would also have to throw in like a Nikhil Alexander Walker or a Kyra Lewis in this trade to make it work next up we have a Kemba Walker trade yes he was already traded to the OKC Thunder but I think that there will be teams lining up and calling Sam Presti's phone to try and trade for the former Boston Celtic point guard and this one is going to be Kemba Walker to the Los Angeles Lakers in exchange for Contavious Caldwell Pope Kyle Kuzma and the Lakers first round pick in this year's draft so they would have to wait a little bit on this trade because Kemba Walker was recently traded but for the Lakers they get that primary ball handle or that third score somebody that is not really an elite player but a good enough player we can call the Lakers having a big three of LeBron, AD, and Kemba. He can kind of take a little bit of stress off LeBron and AD and definitely would be the third best shot creator slash scorer on this Lakers team by a wide margin. So I think he'd be a great point guard pickup for the Lakers. They could be in the John Wall, Kemba Walker, Spencer Dinwiddie market, somebody like that. And I think go out and get Kemba Walker. It will cost you KCP and Kyle Kuzma, so it will gut your bench a little bit. But you honestly clear up a little bit of money down the line and you can make something work there you do have to give up the 22nd for uh, pick in this draft and that would just be insane for the thunder because hey you just got Kemba Walker you basically got the 16th overall pick for taking on Kemba Walker's contract you get a young player in Kyle Kuzma you can still work out there in OKC or you can look to flip him as well as the 3 and D player veteran you get in KCP but also you're getting the 22nd overall pick in this draft that would leave the thunder with four first round picks so this makes total sense for the thunder if you're the Lakers now I, I thought it was a lot giving up KCP and Kuzma. So I think there is a way that you can maybe remove one of them. But just to make the money work right now, I had to include both of them. Third trade here is a fairly simple one. It is the Sacramento Kings trading Buddy Heel to the Orlando Magic in exchange for Mo Bamba. Now, the Magic have a very young core with Cole Anthony, RJ Hampton, Marco Fultz, Chumo Kiki, Jonathan Isaac, Wendell Carter Jr., and two first round picks in the top 10 that they're going to be adding in this year's draft. But one common thing about most of those players... They really can't shoot at an efficient level. So 
adding Buddy Hield, a movement shooter, off the ball guy, a spot up one of the best three point shooters in the NBA. You can add to kind of help the spacing for some of those guys, like your important players in Fultz and Isaac, and who you're going to take at five if it's Jonathan Kuminga. And for the Kings, they get off the Buddy Hield contract. They can roll with the Halliburton and Fox backcourt, like we all know they want to do for the future. And they take a flyer on Mo Bamba. They would have the second and sixth overall picks from the 2018 draft in Bagley and Bamba in that front court. But with Rashawn Holmes being a free agent, Bamba really never got that role or just really that playing time or that chance in Orlando. So maybe he just needs a fresh start. Go over to Sacramento. And I think this is a nice trade for both these teams. Trade number four is a pretty big one. It is the Golden State Warriors trading for Pascal Siakam in exchange for Andrew Wiggins, James Wiseman, and the 14th overall pick in this year's draft. So for the Warriors side of things, they add a shot creator, defender, ball handler, or somebody that they can kind of run their small ball lineups with because you could put Pascal Siakam at the four or at the five, who's an incredible defender, and you're pairing up with him and Draymond Green in that front court. That is very nice. You would have Clay and Curry in that backcourt. I doubt they're bringing back Ubre, but that fifth man in the rotation could be the seventh overall pick in this draft. It could be Jordan Poole. So I really like this trade a lot for the Golden State Warriors. Just really trying to go all in with the Splash Brothers reuniting next year. Curry and Clay, they're getting up there in age and dream on too. So you might as well go all in. Try to use these assets to go out and get a star. Either it's Damian Lillard, either it's Ben Simmons. But for this trade, it's Pascal Siakam. And for the Raptors, they might not want to pay Siakam that contract anymore. Wiggins does have a year less on that. So they'd get off that contract a year earlier. Wiggins from Canada, I thought that'd be a cool connection. They would sell a ton of jerseys with that. They get James Wiseman, the second overall pick in the 2020 draft. They can have him and Boucher run that five spot next year. And they get the last pick in the lottery in this year's draft, maybe adding like a Moses Moody, a James Booknight, a Cam Thomas to their team. And I think if they aren't going to really extend Siakam down the line, because he's getting up there in age, he's one of the older players that came out of the 2016 draft class. This is a great trade for the Raptors and for the Warriors. This is a win now move. You knew a Kristaps Sporzingis trade was coming. So here we have the Charlotte Hornets trading for Kristaps Sporzingis in exchange for Terry Rozier and the Hornets first round pick in this draft. So for the Charlotte Hornets, they get that center. They haven't had really a good center in a while. Al Jefferson was solid for them, but it's not like he was that long-term answer there at the five, but he was an all-star for them. I'll give Al Jefferson some credit when he was in Charlotte with Kemba Walker, but for, yeah, Charlotte, you can have P.J. Washington at the four still. You got Chris Ops at the five, who could space the floor, rim protect, go inside in the post. We'll see what he could do under James Brago. He's very versatile, and just him in the pick and roll with Lamelo Ball would be great. They'd also still have Miles Bridges and Gordon Hayward. I would really like that Hornets team going into next year's season. As for the Dallas Mavericks, they get a great score, one of the more underrated players in the NBA in Terry Rozier, who's had two phenomenal years since he's been there in Charlotte. He can be that second scoring option with Luka next year, and we all know that Luka is going to get that rookie max extension this offseason, but this would clear up a max slot and a half for 2022 when it's a loaded free agency class with potentially Kawhi being there, KD, Kyrie, Bradley Beal, Zach Levine. There could be a ton of free agents next year and Dallas can go out and sign one of them to pair up with Luka. And having Terry Rozier could be a nice third or fourth scoring option long-term after you work on an extension for him next offseason. And you also get a lottery pick from the Hornets as well, which you could potentially use on looking out for Singen, a Isaiah Jackson. It could be a Davian Mitchell, a Corey Kispert, just surrounding either defenders, shooters, or bigs around their franchise guy and Luka Doncic under their new head coaching system with Jason Kidd. John Wall's got to be traded this offseason, right? Like the Rockets and him, they have to work out with something. I don't know though, but this is a John Wall trade to the Miami Heat. The Rockets will be getting Andre Iguodala, Gordon Dragic to make the money work. Now they could do something where they just wave them and sign back with Miami. That makes some sense. Two second round picks and the Miami Heat get John Wall. So John Wall, this was his first year after being out for like a year and a half. And honestly, it was a pretty good season. Players like Gordon Hayward and Christoph Porzingis have had rough rehab years. But John Wall's season this year was pretty solid, even though he was on one of the worst teams in the NBA. But for the Miami Heat, they get that shot creator, that facilitator to kind of have a mini big three. I'm not saying John Wall is what he used to be, but you have Bam, you have Jimmy Butler, you, you would still have Hero, Robinson, none. But then you kind of got John Wall in there who could be your third scoring option or fourth scoring option, but facilitating the offense for the Miami Heat when it matters in the playoffs. And they, I feel like they have to make a trade this offseason. I almost had them trading for Kevin Walker, which could definitely suit them, either Wall or Walker. As for the Rockets, 
it's still not a great contract. He doesn't fit your timeline. I think if you find any team that can take on John Wall's contract, you got to take what you can get. Two second round picks is fine, in my opinion, as a return for John Wall. And that's what I think the Rockets should do. And I think the Heat should go out and get another shot creating point guard. Either it's Kemba Walker or John Wall. And in this case, I think it needs to happen with John Wall. And here is the big blockbuster one that I think is inevitable at this point and will happen in the offseason. It's between the Philadelphia 76ers and the Portland Trailblazers. The Portland Trailblazers are going to be trading Damian Lillard and Robert Covington to the Sixers in exchange for Ben Simmons, George Hill, Matisse Thybul, Tyrese Maxey, two first round picks in 2021 and 2023, and three pick swaps. Now for the swaps and picks, you can kind of interchange those if you want to do three first round picks and two swaps. I just think it needs to be five picks altogether. Now for the Blazers, this is if Damian Lillard wants out. If he doesn't, then we're not going to be talking about this. But I think if he wants out, this needs to happen. This is the best deal they can get that makes sense for both teams. Because in a Damian Lillard trade, it's going to cost a lot for a team. So you don't want to gut your roster completely like the New York Knicks, right? If they wanted to trade for Damian Lillard, they'd literally have to gut everybody on their team. But Julius Randle, yeah, that team's not contending. So for the Sixers, it makes sense. You lose a lot of defense here, but you could still roll out a really good starting five next year with Lillard, Seth Curry, Tobias Harris, Robert Covington, and Joel Embiid. That team offensively and defensively can contend for an NBA championship next season. As for the Blazers, you're getting one of the best defensive players in the NBA who's still very young in Ben Simmons. Maybe smaller market, you can work on his jump shot and go from there. Now, they get another great defensive player who's very young in Matisse Thibel, who was just all defensive second team. You get Tyrese Maxey, who had a phenomenal rookie season for the role he had, and just an expanded role in Portland. He could do some great things. George Hill, they can maybe look to flip for multiple second round picks, as well as getting the draft capital in return down the line. This is like the James Harden type trades, the Anthony Davis, the Paul George. You're getting a ton of first round picks, a ton of swaps, and this is a good jump start to their rebuild. Oh yeah, you thought I was done with blockbuster trades? No, I have another one. I actually talked about this trade in my 10 trades that need to happen last year in the 2020 offseason and i'm a fan of this trade it is the denver nuggets trading will barton michael porter jr zeke naji a first round pick and two swaps to the wizards for bradley beal now bradley beal is a free agent in 2022 I feel like the Wizards, if they can move him this offseason for a good package, they should do so. Start their rebuild there. Maybe, quote-unquote, tank next year. Get good draft picks. And obviously, get the assets they can get for Bradley Beal. So, for the Nuggets, there's their big three. They would have Nikola Jokic, Bradley Beal, and Jamal Murray. That team can contend in the Western Conference with any other team out there. They also have good players that can play alongside of them. As Paul Millsap, Monty Morris, Aaron Gordon going forward. And this trade is a win now championship move. You just had the MVP. You have one of the league's best young point guards. And you're getting one of the league's best scorer who just finished second in the scoring title race in Bradley Beal. You can lock him up to an extension there in Denver. And I would just love this trade long term because Beal's not too old even though he was drafted in 2012. He's a lot younger than Damian Lillard who is also in that class. As for the Wizards, you're getting Michael Porter Jr. That is the big young asset you get in this trade he could be a star in this league he'll help jumpstart your rebuild you build around him i would love this a lot for the wizards getting mpj in return now will barton's in there really to make the money work and they can maybe look to flip him find a third team zeke naji who was a first round pick last year he can be there in their front court which they definitely need some big men there and it's nice to have a young big man who was taken in the first round last year you get a first round pick and two swaps now there might need to be more draft capital in this trade and i'm cool with that if it's two first and two swaps maybe two first and three swaps i am perfectly fine with that on to our second to last trade yeah it involves zero players at all it is the cleveland cavaliers trading their third overall pick to the orlando magic for the fifth and eighth overall picks in this draft so for the magic they're going from five and eight to three i kind of love this because jalen green is the perfect fit for them with all the signs that moby might be going to man i would love to see jalen green on the orlando magic they kind of need that wing score and he has such boom potential taking it number three he could definitely be the best player in this class and in orlando you kind of have your ones your young ones in faults cole anthony and rj hampton but green has so much more superstar potential than all of those guys so i think they should move five which could be kaminga and eight which could be jalen johnson or keon johnson to go up and get jalen green as for the cleveland cavaliers this is if they don't want to trade colin sexton because if they don't want to add jalen green because they have sex land they took a coro in the top 10 last year you trade down a little bit you could use to trade these picks 
with like Kevin Love to get something else, or you take Kuminga, who might fit your team a little bit better, can be that power forward. Your 3 4 5 can be a Koro Kuminga Allen. That's a great young 3 4 5 for the future. And you get the eighth overall pick. You can add in a Keon Johnson, a Davian Mitchell, a Jalen Johnson to really improve that bench and go along with their young core with the players that I mentioned. And yeah, imagine like that starting five of Sexland, a Koro Kuminga, and Allen with like coming off the bench. You got the eighth overall pick in the draft. Like that's a great young core for Cleveland. Hopefully is taking a step in the right direction. Maybe they'll be bad again next year. That is fine. But I think those five young players can be a start for them to try to make the playoffs once again, since they haven't done it without LeBron in a while. And then finally, our 10th overall trade. I really didn't want to do any duplicate players. This is the only trade on this list that has a duplicate player. And that is the Boston Celtics going out and trading for Miles Turner and Jeremy Lamb in exchange for Tristan Thompson, Romeo Langford, Aaron Nesmith, and two first round picks. As for the Celtics, oh boy, who's a better fit to this team than Miles Turner? A rim protector, a stretch five. This would just be a amazing pickup for the Celtics who have would have a great big man rotation of Al Horford, Robert Williams, and Miles Turner, something they desperately need going into next year's season. And they also get Jeremy Lamb to help them be a secondary ball handle or shot slash shot creator off the bench. And then for the Pacers, you're getting Tristan Thompson really to make the money work. Two former 14th overall picks in Aaron Nesmith and Romeo Langford, and two future first round picks. So you're getting kind of a good young return here in exchange for Miles Turner. Those are just kind of two Miles Turner trades that I'd love to see happen. I'd love to see Miles Turner on the Pelicans, and I'd love to see Miles Turner on the Boston Celtics. So yeah, those are going to be my 10 trades that I believe need to happen this offseason. We had a couple blockbusters with Damian Millard, Bradley Beal, and Pascal Siakam. We had some just perfect fit trades with Miles Turner to Boston and to the Pelicans, and then just a trade involving some draft picks involving the Cleveland's first round pick at three and Orlando's first round picks at five and eight. So if you guys did enjoy the video, I would appreciate it if you drop a thumbs up. Let me know what your favorite trade was down below. And is there any other trades that I missed out that you're like, yeah, that needs to happen this offseason. Please let me know down below. I love you guys and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.